And of course, at such a crucial time for Chinese policymakers, the PBOC finds itself really, you know, as the, the key player in what it can do to try and boost sentiment. It's got a lot of powerful tools in its kit. Can any of them really serve to revive broader household confidence for the property sector? Well, there are two things Chinese authorities can do, which they're doing, but uh, I, I, would, I would argue that doing too slow. Uh, number one is to provide more liquidity to the largest developers of the property market to actually make sure that they are not, not the defo further defaulting on any debt. The other thing is to issue much, much more central government debt to swap out local government debt. Uh, currently, local governments are heavily burdened uh, in their debt. And uh, don't forget, local governments are the, uh, one of the biggest, actually biggest investors, biggest uh, uh, buyers of goods in the economy. Uh, the government has issued recently a uh, one trillion uh, RMB in the amount of they call extra long uh, central government debt. What they should do to, 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 to more than double, they should have 10 trillion or even 20 trillion, uh, that amount of extra long bond. Actually, the market response to one trillion extra long maturity bond of the central government has been extremely, extremely enthusiastic. So I do believe that in the coming month, there will be a lot of more, uh, lot of uh, more and more policies to come out. People are holding their breath to uh, wait for uh, the policy announcements in July, when the third plenary of the, uh, of the Central Committee of the CCP will be held. For the property sector, it's interesting. Would you say that it's more important, more critical for you to be showing up confidence uh, for the developers as opposed to chipping away at excess inventory, which we've seen the PBOC unleash this 300 uh, billion yuan when it comes to credit for banks to be able to fund some of these local government property purchases? Well, I would argue that the 300 billion uh, RMB going to local governments for them to buy the inventory uh, it's good, but not enough. Okay, I, I would argue that the actually more important thing is to float the developers, uh, because when the developers, actually the headquarters of developers uh, are not in good shape, they, they, may, they may further default on their debt, whether domestic or international. When, the, and when they default their debt, there will be tremendous shocks uh, in the financial markets. Let's, the structure of developers in China, let's, let's really quickly remind you is that they have a headquarter borrowing money from financial markets and then they have lots of lots of regional headquarters which are responsible for developing local uh, projects or local uh, apartments and local ap the apartments uh, are now not being finished in many areas and local governments are worried that when the apartments are not finished uh, their residents will go to the street to complain causing social problems so, so far, the focus has been on local projects, uh, pushing developers to finish. But I argue that there's another equally, if not a more important the job, that is to stabilize the headquarters of the developers. We have seen that huge rally when it comes to China's property debt, but overall, really, that surge of, of bonds across China, so much so that since March, I think we've been hearing about the PBOC actually coming in and trading bonds. What do you make of that? Well, the situation in China is that um, uh, there's tremendous amount of liquidity, tremendous amount of liquidity. People are very cautious. They hold their hold on to their cash. They hold on to their bank deposits. Uh, they do not want to uh, spend as much as they usually do. And investors uh, are also doing the same. So the huge amount of liquidities are trapped in the banking sector. What the central government should do is to issue lots of uh, uh, central government debt. By the way, the central government only has about 20% uh, of GDP in the amount of the central government debt much, much more, more than double, doubling the size can, uh, can work for the, uh, for the whole economy. The local governments are holding on to a loss of debt, which amounts to 100% of GDP by my calculation. So what is going on is like this. Households are willing to buy central government debt and the households are not willing to, 
to buy directly local government debt, there should be a swap. Um, productivity improvements is sort of one aspect uh, of the challenge when it comes to China at the moment, right? I know that you've done some some work when it comes to the role of technology in what, what this looks like next, potentially for the labor market. Well, uh, the, the Chinese economy is quite very, very different from the U.S. economy. Uh, if, I'm on, if I may, uh, let me try to simplify this. Okay, the U.S. economy is wonderful in coming up with innovations from zero to one, such as SpaceX, uh, the, 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 the rockets, such as uh, uh, Tesla in EV. However, the Chinese economy is wonderful in making, or very quick in making, uh, one to one million. Okay, the two economies actually can work together. Okay, so currently I'm not too worried about China's uh, 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 technological progress in the industries. Okay, now I worry a little bit about the too fast uh, uh, one to one million uh, innovation replacing a lot of labor, uh, replacing reducing employment. That is my current uh, worry. Okay, and uh, however, the Chinese economy is also expanding in the service sector. Now, service sector. In, in shortage of labor. Uh, these are the people who are delivering packages. Uh, these are the people who are uh, cleaning our uh, buildings. These are the people who will come home to homes to, to take care of the aged people and the illness. Uh, people have illness. Mm. Okay. So overall, overall, I'm more worried about the consumption side of the Chinese economy. I'm less worried about the production side of the economy.